juggling. So an important concept in uh, physiology and biology is that of equilibrium and steady states. Homeostasis is a steady state. And I go into this in the videos that are online, but I don't actually show YouTube videos online because uh, I'll, I'll get in trouble with YouTube. So I'm going to show them offline or in the classroom. So the steady state situation is where everything is staying the same. Now with homeostasis, it's more or less the same, but you know, whatever, that's close enough. But it takes an input, an ongoing input of energy into the system in order to keep it the same. So it's not the same and it's just stopped. It's the same, but in order to keep it the same, we have to put energy into the system. So if you think about what an organism is. An organism takes in energy from the environment and other things, and it uses that energy in order to grow, and it uses that energy in order to reproduce, and it uses that energy in order to maintain itself. Maintaining itself is the homeostasis part. So it's constantly taking in energy, and it's using that energy in order to keep its internal physiology more or less sustained, maintain homeostasis. And that's called a steady state. An equilibrium can be, it doesn't take energy and it still kind of maintains itself, but it's a steady state, it, you have to put in energy to maintain itself. And if you don't put in that energy, if you stop putting in the energy, then the system falls towards what is known as equilibrium. And equilibrium for an organism is basically you're dead. So you've got a system. The system is finely balanced, more or less staying the same. It requires energy to maintain that system. You stop putting in energy into the system. The system normally, naturally goes towards what's known as equilibrium, and at the equilibrium state, you're dead. Things have fallen apart. And this is a lot like juggling. Equilibrium. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually run a YouTube video. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pretend. I'm juggling. I've got the balls in the air. It takes a constant input, actually, of energy. You know, and it takes energy to move my arms around. So you're maintaining a state that's more or less constant as you're juggling. And if you stop putting in that energy, or if something bad happens, the balls drop to the floor. Now, the balls on the floor literally are equilibrium. And the maintaining of the balls in the air is steady state. The next video, which we are going to be able to even see the face of the video, actually has a drop of water. It's uh, dyed red, so it's, it's easy to see and it's very pretty. The drop of water drops into a smooth surface of water, and it creates ripples. So this is a very familiar thing. We don't even need to see it like we could if we wanted to. Now, that drop of water is supplying energy, and the ripples basically are created by that energy. As the energy of the water droplet hitting the uh, surface of the water as it hits it, it's supplying kinetic energy which is transferred into the surface, the water itself. Uh, and... Oh. Did we crash? Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> So that energy is put into the system. And actually, that's a perturbation away from equilibrium. This is a drop of water. This is actually very pretty. So it's worth watching if it'll learn. So energy is put into the system. We have perturbation away from equilibrium. And then with time, the energy will dissipate out of the system. It'll actually be lost as heat. The system will actually increase in temperature, and then the heat itself will dissipate away into the environment. So energy is put into the system, so it's now perturbed away from equilibrium, and then it will naturally fall back towards equilibrium, and the falling back towards equilibrium point is where the water is smooth again. Your body is constantly putting in energy you can imagine that, drip after drip after drip, you can maintain the system doing whatever it's going to do with the water bouncing around a little higher than flat. 
You put drip after drip, it'll maintain the system away from equilibrium. You stop putting in the drips, and the system falls back towards equilibrium. So how do we maintain steady state? That is homeostasis. Come on. It's not by playing guitar. We use something called negative feedback loops. A negative feedback <coughs> loop is a system, a control system, where when the body changes in its internal parameters, its internal, um, or whatever, whatever the word I'm looking for is, states sufficiently far from homeostasis, then we have mechanisms that bring the body back to homeostasis. Now, you can think of this like a thermostat in your house. If it gets too cold in your house, the furnace turns on, warms up the house, and it'll continue warming up the house until it gets to be too hot and the furnace turns off. That is a negative feedback loop. It maintains the temperature of the house at a certain level. Your body's got negative feedback loops all over the place. Much of what physiology is all about, especially when you're getting into more sophisticated uh, um, explorations of physiology, is looking at feedback loop, negative feedback loop, negative feedback loop, negative feedback loop, after one after another after another. And these are just your body's paying attention to what's going on in the body. If the things get out of whack too much, it brings things back to where they're supposed to be. Okay? There's also something called a positive feedback loop, and that's why that's there. So positive feedback doesn't happen in biology very often. It happens in a few situations, such as when you're giving birth. When you're giving birth, and I'm going to repeat what I say in one of my videos, you're basically going from a stable situation to a stable situation. Inside the mother, the baby's doing just fine. Outside the mother, the baby should be doing just fine. The transition between inside and outside is not good. And once it starts, it's got to end. And so you've got a positive feedback loop that sets things up so, so that once the birthing process begins, uh, it goes to completion. And that's a positive feedback loop, or it's based on positive feedback. Uh, the baby pressing on the cervix uh, basically causes uh, contraction of the muscles in the universe, uter uterus, uh, which causes the baby's head to press on the uh, cervix even harder and so on and so forth until the baby's out of the uh, uh, the mother. That's a positive feedback loop. Something, the presence actually causes more of something. And you see the same thing with guitars.